One of the financial incomes of the Vandalin gang is loan sharking under the operation of the gang's bookkeeper, Herr Leopold Strauss. As early as Chapter 2, Strauss loans money out to the desperate citizens of Red Dead Redemption 2, all with the later intention of Arthur Morgan collecting on these debts at exorbitant rates. A total of nine debtors, today we're going to be looking at how they had their own importance to both the story and the character growth of Arthur Morgan. With that being said, let's get in to what we came to see. The real meaning behind the debt collections. Herr Morgan! Herr Morgan! Mr. Strauss? You busy, my friend? Why? I'll cut you in. Loaning. Already? You know how it is. People is happy to borrow off someone like me, but more enthusiastic paying back to someone like you. Of course. Who are they? Hmm, let me see. A Chick Matthews works at Guthrie Farm. He's a hand, I believe. Mr. Robel, the small holder at Painted Sky, runs the operations there, badly. Miss Lily Millet is a ranch maid up at Emerald Ranch. And here was me believing Dutch's bluster about us helping folk. It's legal work, Mr. Morgan. Debtors belong in prison. We are doing them a favor. Ah, I'll make sure they see it in them terms. After receiving the list of debtors from Herr Strauss, Arthur sets off to collect, firstly beginning with Lily Millet of Emerald Ranch. Lily is sat outside of the abandoned clothes store near the train station with their partner Cooper. Why's it always gotta be such a goddamn performance with you? Now, I told you I'd get you the money next week, and I'll get it. If you didn't make it this week, who's to say you'll make it next? Don't you take that tone with me. I thought you said you loved I me. I do. I do. But what I get paid ain't enough for one person, let alone two. Your money's gotta be your problem now. The only problem I got is this bleating going on in my ear. Now, lay off it, Lily. God damn it. Lily, where's our money? What? That loan you took. It's payday. I'm sorry. I don't have it right now. Well, then, I guess we got a big problem, don't we? Cooper, give him what you've got. I ain't giving him nothing except a lessening damn murder. Son of a bitch. In this scene, Arthur presents a strong intimidation towards Lily. He doesn't care that she's a female, or that he could potentially end up in a brawl with Cooper. He's there for one reason, and one reason only. To collect on the debt. Even after he's collected, Arthur can still interact with Lily intimidating her, even though he really has no reason to do so. You're lucky. He was here to pay for you, miss. I wouldn't have had to borrow it if he wasn't. Now stay the hell away from me. For the second collection, Arthur heads over to Guthrie Farm to meet one Chick Matthews. Firstly being misled by Chick himself, Arthur soon finds himself in pursuit of the debtor while insults are hurled in his direction. You Chick? I was told I could find a Chick Matthews up here. Chick Matthews? You mm, might want to talk to that fella over there. Nah, I'm just here to work for the season. You Chick Matthews? Oh no, no, not me sir. Uh, uh, that's the greenhorn over there. Oh, and there he goes. So long, long shark. <laughs> Damn it! Hey! Get back here! You owe us money! At least you ain't dead yet. Look, look, I got the money, but it's hidden. Untie me, and I'll tell you where it is. You're no place to bargain, boy. Just untie me, I'll tell you. Get the ropes off already. You owe me one. Holy Moses. I'm begging you. Stop. God dang it. This map will take you to the money. Lucky I ain't taking your teeth as well. Even after Arthur receives the location of the debt, he still intimidates Chick before letting him go with threats of violence. It's following this that we head to our third and final debtor on the list, Mr. Robo. At his home of Painted Sky in Big Valley, Mr. Robo can be caught off guard. Knock, knock, Mr. Robo. No, przepraszam, co pan robi w moim domu? God damn it. English? Uh, you me, speak English? Me? Uh, um, Silesia. Yeah, good uh, for you. I'm here for money. 
Do you borrow from a German man? Aha, uh, German. Uh, um, uh, mein Herr, uh, uh, sprechen das, uh, das, uh, uh, the Kaiserreich. I don't yeah? speak German neither. I'm here for money. Money that you borrowed from Leopold Strauss. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Leopold Strauss. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's time to pay. Where is it? Oh, well, no, I have nothing. It's very bad winter. We've all had a bad winter, pal. Ooh. Where is it? Oh, no. no. Yeah. Arthur doesn't give the man much time to explain before resorting to violence to get what he's here for. After a few punches, Robo finally gives in and allows Arthur to take what he needs to close the debt. Interestingly enough, even after Arthur has claimed the debt, he can continue to take from Robo's home, even grabbing his horse from the barn too. It's understandable that Arthur needed to be intimidating, but was this amount of violence truly necessary? The first three deaths are of course at the very early stages of the title, when Arthur is blinded by his loyalty to Dutch and the rest of the Vandalin gang. There's not a lot of story or character arc behind them, aside from introducing us to what Arthur will resort to for his gang, so let's move on. After collecting the debts, Arthur returns the Horseshoe Overlook to return the money into the camp's donation box, prompting the following scene. How did you get on, Herr Morgan? Fine. Our accounts are up to date. Sad sacks, a lot of them. Good, very good. My pleasure. Uh, well, if it's pleasure you're after, there is one other. This farmer preacher fellow I met in Valentine, Mr. Downs. The opinionated little do-gooder? Yeah, I know the one. I certainly know the type. Thank you, Herr Morgan. There's no need to thank me. Like you said, it's pleasure I'm after. He's more slippery than he seems. I've tried being polite. Don't take any nonsense. Nonsense? Me? If he doesn't have the money, beat him. Well, I usually do. I know. I know. The final few lines spoken between Strauss and Arthur are interesting. Arthur claims he does this for pleasure. Does he really? Is he that blinded by loyalty that debt collecting is just a form of pastime to him? or is he masking his feelings from himself because he knows this isn't right? Up in the Heartlands is where Arthur can find the home of Thomas Downs and his family. Arthur does exactly as instructed by Leopold Strauss, and upon learning that Strauss had already tried to reason with the debtor, all to no avail, Arthur jumps straight in with the violence. Your dad's caught you, mister, and it ain't letting go. <sighs> You borrowed money from my business partner, Herr Strauss. You owe him, you took the money. He wants it back, what's not to understand? <laughs> Where's our money? I don't have it. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife, or your family, or something. We ain't your idea of <laughs> charity. Is that clear? <laughs> What are you looking at? Thomas! I said what you looking at, woman? My husband isn't well. If we could just have more... Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money! Firstly, the most important piece of information from the scene is that this is where Arthur marked his final days on this earth as he contracted tuberculosis from Thomas. His coldness towards Edith Downs and her son Archie is a continuation of Arthur showing his lack of empathy towards others, as long as he obtains what the gang's owed. Travelling back to camp empty-handed, Arthur informs Strauss of the outcome. Ah, how did you get on? Not so good. He's almost dead. And they seem more or less destitute. You were a fool for lending them the money. Well, people who aren't desperate don't seem so interested in my propositions. Of course. Arthur claims Leopold was a fool for lending money to someone who couldn't pay it back. This seems to be a reoccurring theme so far. Strauss defends this by informing Arthur that it's only people in those positions who are willing to receive the loans. The next couple of tech collections don't occur until the following chapter, with the gang now located more to the south. These first two can be launched in either chapter 3 or chapter 4, prompting different opening scenes. For the sake of this video, I'll show you the chapter 3 scene with the collections before we move on to the chapter 4 section. Ah, 
Herr Morgan. Herr Strauss. How are you enjoying yourself here? Well enough, I guess. And you? Well, it turns out the pursuit of freedom is not a cheap business. Not for us, and not for some of the locals. Shocking already. I prefer to call it banking. You ain't the one handing out the beatings. No, but I am the one feeding the women and children in the camp. What choice do we have, Mr. Uh, Morgan? I don't know. Well, come on, then. Tell me who. Here's the list. Refinery worker turned hunter by the name of Vinton Holmes. You'll find him up in the hills north of Strawberry. Ah, an apprentice undertaker. This one working in rows. His name was... Gwen Hughes. And how many of them do you think will be able to pay? <laughs> With enough encouragement, both of them. <laughs> it's noticeable that Arthur is becoming somewhat frustrated with the deck collections already. He expresses this to Leopold, who once again quickly defends his actions by stating the purpose of his duties. Arthur's not happy that he's beating people with either no or very little outcome. It's around this time he's beginning to realise his actions, but nonetheless, driven by his loyalty to the Vantelin gang, he soldiers on, which takes us to our fifth retrieval, Gwyn Hughes. Gwyn Hughes, start picking out a box for yourself if you don't got that money you owe Leopold Strauss. I, I don't... I, I, I need more time. Doesn't everybody. That casket for you? But you want another. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I can get it for you. But, uh, well, uh, come with me to the churchyard. And stay close. Hmm? All right. Oh, this ain't right. I, I mean, I, I'll get you your money, but, uh, oh, well, you'll see. What ain't right is borrowing money you can't pay back. I guess, I guess, I guess you're correct, but uh, this, it, it ain't exactly right, what we're doing. You ain't the first to put his hand in the collection box, and you won't be the last. Rest a little easier knowing church has been taking more than they need off poor folks since time began. Well, like I said, well... The morality of the matter is a little more confusing than that. <sighs> okay. You head on in the church, I'll keep watch. Well, it ain't in there. It's under here. I'm digging up Mrs. Claypole. Jesus! Well, she got a bunch of jewels in there that she don't need. So as Arthur stands guard, Gwyn Hughes digs up the grave. Arthur is a little disgusted by the actions, as he's used to either intimidating or beating the debtors. Even to him, this is a new low. Following the Gwyn Hughes collection, it's time to head to the second debtor, located up in the mountains surrounding Strawberry. The former refinery worker turned hunter, Winton Holmes. <laughs> Gwyn Holmes? I didn't expect to run into no one out here. Mm. Funny how far a man's debts will follow him. You got some money for me, boy? I seen your name in our ledger. You're with the German? Look, I, I got it for you. It's just, I don't got it yet. It it's up in them hills. Mm. You panning for it? Hunting it. I tracked this cougar. It's rare. Lily white coat, the pelt to more and cover what I owe. If I'm skinning anything, I'm skinning you, boy. Please, I'm out of work. It's the only way you'll get paid, and all the hard work's already done. Fine. Move. Throughout the travels up into the caves, Winton tries to reason with Arthur in hopes he'll appreciate his situation, but Arthur's having none of it, and continues to intimidate and threaten the debtor. Drive! I'm driving. Make me come out here, make me chase all over this goddamn mountain. Hey, you knew it was a risk. I didn't know nothing. Your name is all I knew. Well, the German-speaking fella then, Mr. Strauss, he knew my work situation was precarious, that this whole thing was a, a risky venture. Wait, risky? 
Am um, I at risk now? Are you threatening me, Winton Holmes? I ain't. No, certainly not. Sir, I'm... I'm merely stating a man without a job, with limited prospects, at those rates, repayment was by no means guaranteed. I said I'd do my best, and I did. You're continuing to annoy me. Upon arriving, the duo separate in search of the White Cougar, which doesn't end very well for the debtor, and almost cost Arthur his life too. After selling the pelt at the strawberry butcher shop, Arthur returns the debt money back to camp. During these last two debts, Arthur is beginning to realise that the collections are becoming more than just intimidation and threats of violence. He's now resorting to extreme tactics just to receive the loans, digging up graves and hunting wild animals. It's becoming increasingly difficult just to claim the money. We understand that Arthur is performing these duties out of loyalty to the gang, but are they really worth the risk anymore? It's something he's beginning to see. During the later stages of Chapter 3, as a few of the gang members are heading back to Valentine to hit the bank, Leopold Strauss has some interesting news for Arthur. Mr. Morgan! Herr Strauss? That man, the debtor, Thomas Downs, apparently he's dead. Dead? Huh. Well, no, he didn't seem very well. His wife. I believe he has a wife and child. She will assume the debt, of course. Of course. Then you can head up there and collect. We lent them a lot of money. Okay. Gentlemen, let's go rob ourselves bank. Arthur is cold during this interaction. Again, is this to mask his empathy in favor of his loyalty? After the bank robbery, Arthur heads to the Downs Ranch to collect the final payment from Thomas's wife, Edith. My husband's not cold in the ground and you've come back here, Archie. I nearly paid off what was owed. Your husband knew the rules when he took that money. Now, I'm real sorry about the way things turned out, but he had a choice. Ain't my fault about the way the world is. He didn't have a choice. He was good, and he did good. There wasn't no choice in that. And you as good as killed him yourself, and don't kid yourself. You had a choice. You speak as if killing was something I cared about. You ever wonder about eternity? You should. I hope it's hot and terrible, Mrs. Downs. Otherwise, I'll feel I've been sold a false bill of goods. Now, please, give me that money. <sighs> Either you got a lazy eye or a lack of respect. Which is it, boy? I ain't got no lazy eye. No respect for the lacks of you. <sighs> well, maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father, I'll keep her in black on your behalf. You think on that, boy? Well, maybe you shall, sir. And maybe other events will transpire. You best stick to them books, because mark my words on this. Vengeance is an idiot's game. Ah, Mrs. Downs, thank you for your punctuality. It's next to godliness, isn't it? That's cleanliness. I'll have to take your word on that. Good day. Once again, he's stone cold during this interaction. As the gang situate themselves in Shady Bell, Leopold has been sharking once more. We've already collected from Winton Holmes and Gwyn Hughes, but I'll leave the scene with Strauss to play in its entirety. On a quick side note, this happened because I was using different save files, but anyway. Mr. Morgan. Still working, Mr. Strauss. What you been up to? Trying to wrap up our accounts before we leave, Mr. Morgan. So you'll be joining us in Tahiti? I uh, rather fancied Australia. A similar kind of people to us. Lots of opportunity. That tells me we're going to be ranchers. Perhaps, but um, so far we have not raised many cattle. No. So, Mr. Morgan, will you help me finalize our business here? <coughs> this is filthy work. We'll need money in Australia. Uh, for cattle and feed, I mean. Why flinch now? You never have done before. I don't know. Well, here they are. Refinery worker turned hunter by the name of Vinton Holmes. You'll find him up in the hills north of Strawberry. And then, hmm, an apprentice undertaker working in roads. His name was Gwen Hughes. Some fishermen by the name of Davison, Algy Davison, okay. living in a place called Catfish Jackson near Scarlet Meadows. A fisherman. And that's it. Uh, We're a union built on that, you know. Okay. 
Arthur is becoming increasingly sick and graduating towards death. It's because of this feeling that he's a little shook about doing this type of work, even if he doesn't realise it yet. He's disgusted by Strauss at this point, even stating that loaning is filthy work, but because he's loyal, he continues to collect. Having already collected from two of the debtors, we only need to deal with one, Algy Davison. Hey! You better have a damn good reason for being on my property, mister. Remember that loan you took, Mr. Davison? Well, time's long since up. I'm here to collect. Oh, I should have known. You goddamn bludgeon men are all the same. Sure, I'm sure I got your money. Every stinking cent. It's in the house. Hell, I'll even offer you a drink. We can toast to never laying eyes on each other again. I got a powerful thirst on me right now. How about you? Well, you gotta be stinking drunk already to do this kind of work. Uh... I like doing it sober. If you take my money, surely you take a drink off me as well. That would be the manly thing to do. Let's us handle the money first. Worry about manners later, okay? I could be fishing. You were catching flies, you weren't catching fish. Now come on, let's get us that debt. You back so soon, Pa? Someone's here, boy. Pa, wait, what's going on? Don't just stand there. Go fix us a drink. Another one, Pa? Don't give me no talk, boy. Just do it. I'll look down here for our savings. Savings? Under the sink? Best place for them. Mm. Now, where's them drinks, boy? Drinks ready. It's right there, mister. It's our life savings. Come and take what you owe. Ah! I'll cut your damn head. Clean off. Uh. Uh. Son, I ain't leaving till I'm paid. And while I'm here, your situation's real precarious. This cash in my foot locker, I've been keeping it away from him. Yeah, that was easy, wasn't it? I think I know the sum. And that should cover it. Ain't you the good son. You should be proud of yourself. Even though Arthur was attacked and most certainly had to defend himself, it's the collection from Algie's son that stands out. The way Arthur deals with the child and threatens him. Arthur is conflicted at this point between his gang duties and his feelings about this type of work and it's beginning to show. He's reacting angrily at this point because it's the only way he knows how to deal with this. After Arthur learns of his diagnosis, he begins to try and do right in the world. He's still battling with himself over his conflictions concerning his loyalty to Dutch and doing right from wrong. It's in these two final deck collections that Arthur truly comes to terms with himself. Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Herr Strauss. How are you? About... <laughs> about how I look. Okay. <sighs> Are you, um, are you perhaps available for some work? Debtors? Yes. I guess. Your commitment to your duties is admirable. <coughs> you know, Mr. Morgan, you are... Well, I'm sorry for you. Hmm? No, never mind, I didn't... Look, Strauss. You take care. I ain't dead yet. No, of course not. That's what I was saying. I, uh, I... A debtor, Strauss, who owes you money? Well, uh, there's a deserter from Fort Wallace. Head to him first. They're looking for him out on the road near Three Sisters. Man's name is J. John Weathers. J. John Weathers. Then there's a miner over in Annisburg. He's called 
Well, he's called Arthur. <laughs> like you. Oh. <laughs> Arthur Londonderry. Family man, desperate. You know the type. Couldn't one of the boys do this? I tried. They lacked your... vigor. Vigor, huh? huh. All right. Uh, take care, uh, uh, Mr. Morgan. Even though Leopold is aware that Arthur's dying, he still sends him out collecting, even making small jokes about the situation. This shows us the true nature of Herr Strauss. Even though at this point, as the player, we're all beginning to really dislike the Lone Shark, we need to take into account that throughout the entire game, he hasn't altered his persona or the way he does things. He's not out in the world collecting the debts, seeing what Arthur sees, and he's certainly not going through the same life-altering illness that Arthur is dealing with, so it makes sense he's still the same character. But for now, on to the debtors. Firstly, J. John Weathers. After finding Mr. Weathers out near Moonstone Pond, Arthur confronts in the following scene. J. John Weathers. They call me Snow Goose now. Whatever they call you. You borrowed money off of Leopold Strauss. The bills come due. This ain't the best time, sir. This ain't the best time for anyone. Mr. Strauss knew it was a long-term proposition. The debt is due. Okay. I got supplies meant to last through the winter. You can take them, just... Is there any way you can help me? I stay out here, there won't be anyone to pay you. I ain't here to help. I'm here to collect. We're all, all of us up against it. Look, there's men after me. <laughs> They're killers. I ain't a deserter, just an objector. It ain't right. If there was another way than running, I need your help. Shut up. Please. I... Up here, it's him. It's too late. Form up, we shoot on sight. I clear off, sir. Shit. Well, seeing as I'm here, may as well protect the payment. Arthur is angry, but not at the debtor. He's angry at himself for what he's doing. After defending the payment, as he puts it, Arthur learns more about the situation that the debtor is in. Probably still save something. Really now? Look, you can take the silver locket for the debt. Damn the debt. Just get her somewhere safe. Go on. Thank you, fella. You know, there ain't enough kindness in this world, that's for sure. But you. I don't know nothing about kindness. Arthur absolves the debt after learning of Mr. Weather's pregnant partner. We'll go into why this is important very shortly, but for now we need to visit the next debtor and conclude both stories together. Arthur Londonderry is working the mines in Ansberg. Arthur Londonderry, is he here? I'm sorry, feller, but you're too late. Arthur's dead. <laughs> The man's dead. What's wrong with you? Oh, boy. You can't exactly beat it out of him now, can you? <laughs> you might get something off his widow just across from Butcher's Creek, but I'd hurry. You ain't gonna be the only one a-knocking. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, I ain't the godforsaken moneylender. Following this, Arthur heads to the home of the London Derry family. You gonna pack all your stuff, Angel? I don't wanna go. It'll be an adventure? I don't want an adventure. I want my daddy. Be brave, sweet angel. Be brave. Fine. <coughs> uh, Mrs. London Derry. <coughs> Arthur's dead. I know. I'm sorry for it. It's just... 
We lent Arthur some money, you see, and... So it was you. You son of a bitch. What do you want now? You want my boy's shoes? You want the food out of our bellies, what little there is? You want me to lie down for you? No, no. I... Arthur gave everything to pay your bills. Everything. And now there's some fellas coming to take the house. There ain't nothing left, mister. I uh, just wanted to say the debt's canceled and to you know, take this. It won't bring your husband back, I know. You need money and I don't. Well, you're a good man. I just wish you'd done it before he worked himself into the grave. But you know, maybe you and your friend that lent him the money could do things differently. Like, not threaten a man. Excuse me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I really am. The final two collections are, with the obvious exception to Thomas Downs due to the narrative, by far the most important ones to Arthur. During a conversation with Rainsfall late in the game, we learn a saddening tale of Arthur's past that relates to this. You know, I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. No, what was his name? Isaac. His mother, Eliza, was a waitress I met. When she got pregnant, she she knew who I was, what my life was. I didn't want to promise nothing I couldn't keep, but I said I'd do right by them. Every few months, I'd stop by there for a few days. He was such a good kid. She was too, I guess. <laughs> Just a kid, 19. What happened? I got there one day and saw two crosses outside. I knew right away. Turned out some bastards had come through. Robbed them. And shot them dead. And offered ten dollars. It hardened me. Feeling that kind of pain, I guess. I had to... I don't know. When collecting from J. John Weathers, Arthur changed his ways as soon as he saw the pregnant wife of the debtor. It reminded him of the loss of his former partner and their son, Isaac. Seeing this really affected Arthur and brought back those deep repressed memories. Learning of the death of Mr. Londonderry had an even bigger impact on Arthur. The foreman laughing while quoting, Arthur's dead, makes Arthur evaluate the decisions he's made so far in life. After all of his loyalty, would this be how people react about him when he passes? Upon visiting Mrs. Londonderry and his son at their home in this heartbreaking scene, Arthur sees a mirrored version of a life he could have had. He sees how Arthur Londonderry's death had left his wife and child behind, and knowing that the loaning of that money was the primary reason for his passing due to being overworked in the mines, and now Mrs. Londonderry and her child are losing their homes because of this, impacts Arthur very hard. He sees the impact he's made on the lives of people, he wasn't there for his own family, and he aided in the destruction of both the Weathers family and the London Derrys. It's in these final moments that he realises how wrong he's led his life. Returning to the gang's final camp at Beaver's Hollow, Arthur makes the decision to deal with Herr Strauss once and for all. Depending on Arthur's honour level, the scene will play out in two different ways, but ultimately have the same outcome. For those who have only experienced one, I'll play both for you, beginning with high honor, then following with low honor. Hey. Ah, how did you get on, Mr. Morgan? Just then. Hmm. Just... Get up. What? Get up! What? What is wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. Get your bag. Is this it? I don't understand. 
I ain't gonna kill you. Though I probably should. You disgust me. And you shame us. If we could be shamed any more than we already are, that should do. Go! I don't understand you. What are you doing? Go and get a job! You know, they, they say the sick delude themselves. I was your friend. You and me, we ain't decent. But those folk, they was. Now here, take that. Take that and get lost. I'm leaving. How did you get on, Mr. Morgan? Just Danny. Hmm. Just... Get up. What? Get up! What? What is wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. What are you doing? Getting rid of you. You time-wasting maggot. Get your bag. I don't understand. Just I... get out of my sight. Waste my time, you depress me, and you're a parasite, sending me after losers like that. Yeah, I should do. You're an embarrassment. What are you doing? We were partners, yeah. business partners. Go get a new partner. You know, they, they say the sick delude themselves. I was, I was your comrade. My comrade? <laughs> you're a creep. Creeping a parasite, ain't it, time waster? Now, take that. Take that! And don't annoy me. I'm leaving. <laughs> In his final days, Arthur comes to realize the error of his ways. If you guys enjoyed today's video, you all know what to do. And if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. Is there any particular character or topic of Red Dead Redemption 2 that you'd like to see me cover? Feel free to let me know in the comment section. With that being said, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.